What's good, popper people? Bryant Cook, and today we're playing my favorite deck in the format, Cycle Storm. In front of you is not the list that we'll be playing today. This is actually the list from the previous video. But before we get to that, I do have an announcement. In the month of December, if you're a member of the $50 tier, you still get all your videos early, but so does everybody else. It doesn't matter if you're the $5 tier or the $25 tier, you will have access to early videos. It's a thank you from me to you to everyone that supported this channel over the year. And I really do appreciate it from sharing the videos, likes, comments, and then obviously everyone that subscribes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We've doubled in size this year and it means so much to me. So this is the last list that we recorded with and you can find this video in the card above. At the end of this video, I lost twice to Mono Red, and I talked about maybe needing the green splash in the sideboard for Gnaw to the Bone. And I then switched to a Sultai list. I originally tried out Gnaw to the Bone, it wasn't effective, so I switched to Weather the Storm. This list also did not function that well. And one thing that I liked was having Decentrist Deliverance at, you know, zero, uh, one mana for a cycle. But it did. Tolarian Wind sort of removed the necessary or the need to cycle with your answers so i didn't think that this was actually necessary so i ended up trying out a grixis list where i played ingot chewer in the sideboard as a one mana creature that keeps your songs of the damned and reaping the graves count high and i was really interested in that so i tried this list out and i liked the idea of having pyroblast to support spell peers the issue was that one mountain just wasn't enough. I was put in a lot of awkward situations where I had to choose between the island or the mountain, and it created a tension and it caused the deck to be less consistent overall. So I wanted to move away from this Grixis list. I then recorded a Rakdos list that you can find in the card above. That video probably went live about a week and a half after this video goes live, maybe two weeks. Uh, this list had a lot of good ideas behind it. It's one of the better lists at abusing Pyroblast and Get Chewer, Faithless Looting. But ultimately, the lack of Repository Scob made this list unplayable, in my opinion. So it just wasn't good enough. If you watch that video, I just get absolutely demolished. So today we're returning to Demir. And in front of you is a culmination of everything I've learned over the last month of just losing a lot in leagues. Right now is a difficult time to be a cycle stormer and pauper. And I'm not someone that's going to give up on my favorite deck. I'd rather weather the storm, pun intended, and try to figure out how I can necessarily change the tide. I wanna figure out how I can make my deck viable again, no matter how poorly positioned it is in the metagame. So I've done a lot of testing. And one thing that I've figured out, and let's start with the main deck here, is that Pauper is incredibly fast right now if you're not facing a blue deck. So what can we do to make that better? In my opinion, step one is adding in the fourth Cabal Ritual again. Okay, obviously mana makes you faster, yes. But not only are we faster with the Cabal Ritual now, uh, we are making Cabal Ritual Threshold faster using Tolarian Winds. In this video, we're actually playing three wins. I tried to fit in a fourth and couldn't find room. I really did. I think you'd have to cut a creature at this point if you're trying to add in the fourth copy. And I didn't want to go down to 22 cyclers. So yeah, we're playing three copies of Tolarian Winds today. So you can cast it on turn two to fill up your graveyard, hopefully full of creatures. Untap on turn three, Cabal Ritual, Songs of the Damned, into your Reaping the Graves and just start going wild. So this card is more effective now than it's ever been, and I think that's a reason to go up to four. If you watched any of these stream storm videos on this channel, you would have seen how much I love the interaction between Tolarian Winds plus a storm card such as Reaping the Graves, or Sprouting Vines, whatever. And I've really fallen in love with this card again. That's why I've been playing three and even willing to go up to four. It just makes the deck so much faster, and that's really what we're looking to achieve here. So. Yes, we want speed, but we also want consistency, and that consistency can still be found within Mystical Teachings and Repository Scob. I, I can't imagine playing the deck without these after that Rakdos video. You just need to have them. But we did lose one somewhat essential blue card that I've been playing, which is the Hottest Ploy. I've moved it to the sideboard. We had a couple open slots, and I thought that it made sense. So we put Ploy in the board. I think in general, this card, ever since I've started running Tolarian Winds again, hasn't felt as good. This card's a lot better in a slower metagame, but when the format's fast, three mana to draw two and gain one isn't good enough. And if you jumpstart it, it's still a little bit clunky with how fast the format is right now. So I just think it's a little bit of a lost cause. Yes, you can cycle more street rates later 
when you have a Dahadas ploy in the dock, but we have Telerian wins. You can cash in those street rates without paying life. You also have Lotus Petal into Dranith Healer to cycle the gain life, and then you can use your street rate. You don't necessarily need the Dahadas ploy when you have Telerian wins, uh, which is just something that I think maybe we've been overlooking with the more recent lists. All right, so that covers most of the changes in the main deck, I believe. Uh, just combing through. I believe that does. So I am including a second copy of Repository Scop on the sideboard today. This is primarily for black decks, discard heavy decks, those sort of things. So that way you can get back your Reaping the Graves or Songs of the Damned more effectively. Uh, you could, in theory, board it in against decks with like a lot of weather of the storm. So you can, you know, uh, build up a higher storm count mana you can essentially do the infinite thing that never actually comes up in games uh i say that because everybody is always in love with the idea of going infinite using uh a songs of the damned or reaping the graves a blood celebrant a healer and just cycling once or twice to gain your life back from the blood celebrant i've never actually needed to do that in the hundreds of games i've played with this deck it is the definition of one more but uh, I do like having a second copy specifically for black decks. All right, here's the, uh, the thing I've been hiding this entire time. Mirror Shell Crab. Why is this good? Why would I want to play this instead of Spell Pierce? Spell Pierce is so much faster. It hits Relic before it comes down. All this good stuff. I hear you. I really do. So in that first video that I uploaded last month, I talked about how people don't play Spellbomb on turn one because they'd rather get out their threats. Well, people clearly watched that video because the play patterns shifted to more turn one spell bombs, more turn one relics, that sort of thing. And Spell Pierce just wasn't getting the job done. On top of that, I had people waiting till turn three or four to play it, knowing that they could just pay the tax and punish me. So it was a good idea. But one thing that I realized when playing the Rakdos and the Grixis list was how much I loved the creature aspect. And that's what Mirror Shell Crab is. It's a answer for Relic or whatever, but it's versatile. It could be a counter spell for a spell setter sprite. It could counter their dispel. And they can't, you know, Red Elemental blast it back or dispel. It's actually been so good for me. I've had people play uh, Relics or Spell Bombs with counter spell up and I just Mirror Shell Crab it and they're like, oh, you got me. Uh, I have played this list in one league. I didn't record it. I was just trying it out because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't crazy for playing Mirror Shell Crab again. And Mirror Shell Crab overperformed in that video. So I'm happy to be playing four copies of it again today. And um, yeah, so really it's that it's good pre-spell bomb, good post-spell bomb. And, you know, the fact that it gives you some versatility and stuff like that. You do have three copies of Telerian Winds to also cash these in. You don't necessarily need them to cycle. I did consider Exhum again because having a 5-7 with Exhum really does beat the Demir Terror decks if you can manage to get the Mirror Shell Crab into play because if they block with their 5-5, five five, you win that exchange. I just don't think the creature plan is really what you want to be doing in that matchup, so I'm willing to move away from it and just play uh, the Mirror Shell Crabs as a glorified Stifle Mana Leak combination. We have Darkness, obviously, for the Hypro Aggro decks of the format. Necromass for generic graveyard beats, that sort of stuff. Whew. All right, so that's my deck tech. I believe I've covered everything. If I've forgotten anything, or if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comment section down below. I do my best to answer all of that. And uh, thank you for listening to my long-winded deck tech. I do appreciate it. Hopefully, I didn't forget anything, but if I did, make sure to watch the rest of the video. I'll probably mention it there. All right. Without any further ado, let's head on over to match number one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to round number one. We're on the draw, and unfortunately, I've opened up a hand without lands. We're going to take a mulligan. Okay. Uh, keep this and bottom. Probably Songs of the Damned. 
This hand's essentially a mulligan into five because we're most likely going to be sacrificing the Lotus Petal. We're facing Walls, a traditionally good matchup for us. Cycle the Street Wraith. Okay, I am going to burn the Petal here. I feel like I have to. All right, we'll go grab a Swamp. Cycle Stinger. We're looking for Blue Source, and there's the Blue Source, and Reaping the Graves at this point. They play an overgrown battlement and they pass the turn. We'll draw. There's another island. That's good. Should not tap the swamp. Cycle Stinger. Okay, cycle again. Please give me a Reaping the Graves. Close. A little more clunky. They tap two for a Winding Way, revealing four cards. Yeah, okay. Come on, Magic Online. Stop lagging. Ranger, Battlement, and the Leaf Creature. Okay. Take a draw. There we go. Should I try to go for it here? I think so. I'm going to sacrifice... Or actually, maybe I'll keep that. I mean, the Songs isn't actually getting any better here. So we'll cast it for four. That gives me Threshold. Now we can Cabal Ritual. Guess I don't need to cycle on the stack because we don't have enough Storm anyway. So let's return our creatures. Cycle down to 16. Lotus Petal. Cycle. Another Winds. Cycle. Songs. Okay. Cycle this. And another Songs. That's actually not great that we didn't have any creatures off that. Or even a land drop. I'm going to Teachings for a Reaping the Graves and Pass. Not in an ideal spot right here. We're My next draw will bring us to 33% of the way through our deck. And we've seen a grand total of four creatures. Uh, too many action spells. It's just an awkward draw. Because even if we get through this weird part of the game with the opponent not killing me. Oh, they had a mull drifter. Okay. Even if we make our way through this, there's no guarantee that I'll win on my turn. Because we're really low on resources. My best draw would be like running street rates. They're going to evoke the mole drifter, so they'll draw two. Seven mana. Drift of phantasms. Do they have infinite mana here? I believe that they do. The question is, can they kill me with it? So now they go get a creature with defender, and this should do it. Yep. Okay. We can concede this one. Damn. All right. So, do I want to change my deck? This is a matchup where we're really just looking to outrace the opponent, not interact with them. So, no, I am not looking to interact or change my deck. This is a good hand. We actually have a decent number of creatures. We just have to find land number two. We had the wrong mix of lands and spells in that first game. We'll play the island and immediately cycle the architects past the turn. They play Forest and Aquarian Ranger. Cool. Draw for turn. It's another healer. Cycle Vantasaur. I'm going to hold off. Not hitting land two with a, a couple draws there was really awkward. Ideally, we would save these Lotus Petals for Storm, which is why I don't want to just play them out to lose that Storm count later, because we need that resource it's not free to just play them out and cycle them you do lose something and that's the ability to return more creatures later on we might have to come to a tough uh decision if i don't draw land on my turn or cycle into a land they played the overgrown battlement we did draw okay so we drew one cycle healer valerian wins is great cycle healer they're not likely to kill me on turn three, so we can try to just win on turn four. Winding way. So they have a a drift and Aquarian Ranger. We'll draw another songs. Okay, that was decent. Cycle the Stinger. Creature number five. Another Reaping the Graves. I don't know if I actually wanted that. Okay. Cast Reaping. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? All right, I'm going to hold priority. Put Telerian Winds on the stack. Reaping the Graves for five. 
cycle this. See if I can hit like a street wreath or something. All right, I'm going to cycle the Vantasaur. I'm going to get rid of my colored mana here to make one more black. That was actually a good draw. Play songs. Basketball. All right, so now we have nine mana going in. Oh. Okay. That was a very aggressive concession, but let's see if I can draw cards. It will not let me. Okay, so now we're going into game number three where they will be on the play. No changes. Resubmit. Bummer. No lands. Go to six. Yeah. Bottom of the Lotus Petal, and this is a pretty solid one. Of course, send it to the Caretaker. Songs. I like that. Cycle. Find a Dark Ritual. Some more creatures. Maybe a Winds. This is one of their better starts. Cycle Stinger. Cycle the Wraith. Did not draw into a fourth creature. That's pretty weird. Another Battlement. That means that first Battlement now taps for uh, three. They have four in hand. I don't think I'm supposed to try to win with this. Winning off three cards is, three creatures is so tough. I'm just going to pass. Lead the Stampede. They pick up two. Another Caretaker. Leaf collar. And now they have the shield wall. Drift of phantasms. So they do have it next turn. So I could try here to. I don't like the idea of. I'm just going to take a draw. All right. So we did draw an imposing Vantasaur. Play out Lotus Petal. Cycle the Vantasaur. Songs of the Damned. Does this resolve? Okay. They're representing blue mana right now, so you don't actually know. Six cards in graveyard. Let's sacrifice this for a blue. A ball ritual. They're pausing. They might have negate. I've seen negate out of this deck previously. They let that go. Okay. Another cabal ritual. And now we will reaping the graves for five. Street wraith, and then the others. Cycle again. Another Tolarian Winds. Cycle. Dark Ritual. Cycle Vantasaur. Okay. Return the uh, Architects. Cycle that. Wonder if they're sitting on a weather if it's not a um a counter spell. Repository scob. Exploit, return, reaping the graves. Songs for six. I, I I'm beginning to think it's a weather. I got the Ash Barons. Blue. Blue. Tolarian winds hold priority. Tolarian winds hold priority. Reaping the graves. They're making two mana here. They're going to counter one of the Tolarian winds. That's fine. Street Wraith and then the rest. Cycle the Street Wraith. And then I'm just going to let it happen. But this is really only a draw six. It's not that impressive. And look at all the rituals we have in the graveyard. This could just fizzle. Okay. Uh, so we have two draws here. Cycle Street Wraith. Now we're down to one draw. Okay, cycle the stinger. Damn. Oh, that's so brutal. Believer just dead to the to these two. Their last two cards. I guess they played this one. Maybe there's a chance we're still alive. So now they can transmute the drift. Mole drifter, okay. So they don't guarantee have it yet. They could fizzle. They need an outlet for infinite mana. All right, that doesn't win. They can go transmute the drift here, but it doesn't actually win. So they can alternatively um, go get lead the stampede for five cards. They get another drift. Okay. Oh, they're going to get reaping the graves. And then that does it. Yep, I think I might be dead here. Yep. Now they can play the freed and then untap it using the caretaker. 
and then transmute the other. Yeah, they got us on having a counter spell in hand. Um, bummer. So would we have? It's not gonna let me draw more than four. It was a close one, but they got us. We are zero and one. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the draw against Cosmic Charles. The last few times that I've faced them, they've been on mono red. I was actually thinking about our round one loss in between rounds. It stinks losing to a positive matchup, not going to deny that. That said, we did lose the die roll, and it was pretty much a race. We theoretically could have played better uh, game three. I could have chose not to try to double, um, what is it called? Calarian wins that could have been an option here we pick up a second reaping the graves just something worth thinking about and if you really wanted to improve that matchup not that i think that you need to but if you wanted to you could uh play something like snuff out over darkness in the sideboard all right cycle the singer we need creatures cycle the street wraith okay play out the swamp pass the turn might want to consider burning one of these Reaping the Graves. Omen of the Sea. So there's some sort of control deck. I'm just going to pass. Zorius Chancery, sure. They then cycle the Ash Barons. You got it. Picking up a basic planes. We'll untap. Take a draw. Another Stinger. Cycle. Through a healer. Cycle that. Valerian wins. Lotus Petal. Let's Dark Ritual, see if it resolves. Another Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Let's Reaping the Graves now. I don't need two uh, songs first. Because I might be able to get some more creatures in the graveyard. Alright, so Street Wraith first. Draw Island. Cycle the Stinger. I will songs now. And then we'll return the rest. All right, so I have two creatures in there. Play out the island. Cycle. And again. Ball Ritual was a great draw. Cycle the healer. <laughs> the third Talarian wins. Yeah, you got it. All right. Uh, so we're going to hold priority and cast this Talarian wins. And then Reaping the Graves. Okay. <clears throat> Valerian wins. Eight cards. Cycle the Street Wraith. Again, we'll go down to 12. Cycle the Horror of the Broken Land. I could, in theory, try to keep going. I guess we'll go for Broke. Cycle. Again. Another Songs of the Damned. Okay. Cast this Songs. Mystical Teachings. We'll grab songs again. Flashback the teachings. Reaping the graves. Cast the reaping. I am at 12 life. Street rates first. And we don't have any copies of Songs of the Damned left in our library, so we're pretty free to just return everything here. Start cycling. All right, so we found the blood celebrant. Now we can just start casting our singers and pinging. This will bring us down to seven mana. Cycle Street Wraith. A little bit of a lag. Might want to consider restarting Magic Online after this round. Okay, go down to four. Cycle the Architects. Draw, and the opponent just concedes. Lovely. So they're on some sort of blue-white control deck. We're definitely interested in the Mirror Shell Crabs. Wardot Tolarian wins a Cabal Ritual. One Architects and then a Lotus Petal. It's sort of a skimming plan because these are all cards that allow us to turbo. And I'm generally not a huge fan of the skimming uh, strategy. But against slower decks, you can definitely get away with boarding out some of your speed. 
Game number two, our opponent's taking a mulligan. We did not open a hand of land. Otherwise, this would have been an absolutely insane keep. I believe we have to mulligan. I will keep in bottom a dark ritual. A little bit awkward because the Ash Barons does not tap for black mana to cycle the architects, but the rest of this hand is so strong that I believe it's worthwhile. Our opponent plays a blue-white tower. Okay. Cycle Street Wraith. Lay out the Ash Barons, I guess. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to play or hold. Because if you draw another Ash Barons, you can just cycle the new one. Pass. Land number three for the opponent. Pilgrim. Okay. Reality Acid. What's that? When it leaves the battlefield, Enchanted Permanence Controller sacrifices it. It's an enchant permanent, so it's like a land destruction. Cycle the Street Wraith via Island. Cycle Architects. Pass the turn. The Reality Acid, my Island. Sure. Take a draw. I think it might be time to peanut butter and jam. Dark Ritual. Cycle Horror of the Broken Lands. Attempt a Songs of the Damned. Okay. Hold priority on this Songs. Hilarion Winds. Reaping the Graves. Wraith, Wraith, Architects. Cycle. Cycle. Unfortunately, we are going to lose a Cabal Ritual. I guess I'll cycle the horror too. And now songs for seven. Beautiful. Dark ritual. Cycle the Vantasaur. Cycle Stinger. Again. Repository Scob. Can't quite use that yet. I believe I'm going to leave my mirror shell crabs in the graveyard. I don't really need those at the moment. Okay, return the street rates. Start cycling. I'm at seven life. We've played a land, I believe, because I missed my second land drop. The ball ritual. Just keep cycling. Reaping the grave. So Blood Celebrant likely closes out this game. Cycle the Vantasaur. <coughs> Excuse me. Dark ritual. Cycle Stinger. Just return the other one. We can just keep going. I don't really need a cycle with it on the stack. Lotus Petal. Just want a blue source for this repository scob. Cycling again. I'll take another Songs of the Damned. Cast it for 15 mana. And we win the match! We are now 1 and 1. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we are on the play. Last I knew that our opponent played the Goblin combo deck, sometimes known as Mogwarts. Not really sure what they're up to these days, but I'll keep this hand. Mogwarts does tend to be a little bit faster than us, so interested to see how the Tellurian Winds plays out here. Cycle Architects. Dark Ritual. Can we draw a Swamp on Curve? All right, so they're not on Mogwarts. Cycle the Healer. Cycle Street Wraith. A hey, our hand is looking very good. Cycle. We might be uh, looking to party on turn three. Forest number two. Overrun Battlement Walls again? Wow. Okay. Dark Ritual. Cycle this Draineth Healer. Card number six to the graveyard, Dark Ritual. Cast a Ball Ritual. We're going to hold priority. Cast this Songs of the Damned. Hold priority, cast Hilarion Winds. And then Reaping the Graves. Street Wraith and then the rest. Cycle the Wraith. Cycle this Stinger. And again. Okay, return everything. So by doing that, it just makes a little bit of extra mana with this songs. 
All right, cycle Wraith again. We'll go to 14. Cycle the Vantasaur. Okay. Looking very good at the moment. Um, we still have a land drop. Cycle the Ash Barons. <clears throat> go grab Island. And now we'll play Repository Scob. Gonna have to get a little bit lucky here. Return the Reaping the Graves. Cast it for 10, returning the Repository Scob. And now we need to hit mana off our first few cycles. So you want to return Street Wraith first because it's not a cycle you have to pay mana for. So you get to dig a little bit deeper. First cycle. Nope. Not quite. Cycle again. Ooh. Cycle. Ding! We've won. All right, I'm just going to return the rest. So this is kind of cool in my opinion. So we're going to hold priority. Play. Oh, come on. All right. We are going to repository scop, hold priority, Tolarian wins, discard our hand. And then you get, you know, seven new cards. Yeah, seven new cards. And then from there, you can decide if you want to return a Songs of the Damned or Reaping the Graves based on your new seven. While floating a bunch of mana. Would have been sweet. But uh, we got to turn three walls. Once again, I am not going to sideboard. I don't believe that this is a matchup that we should sideboard for. So this is a risk reward situation. If we hit our swamp, this hand is likely to goldfish our opponent. I'm going to get a little bit risky here. Turn one forest. They play the sentinel. Okay, take a draw. Not a land. Cycle street wraith. Cycle street wraith. Hmm. I'm going to discard Mystical Teachings and pass. Hold out Settlement. They play an Overgrown Battlement. Brain Ranger. Take a draw step. A Ball Ritual. Not quite what I want to do here, so I'm going to discard the Blood Celebrant and pass. I'm also giving our opponent the illusion that maybe I'm not ready to win and that they can take a turn off. Lead the Stampede. That was a draw four. So their Overgrown Battlement taps for two, now it taps for three, and they can untap it using the Quarian Ranger as well. Now they have four mana. They play another Sentinel, and they pass. So now it's our time to uh, try to win. We'll play out the Lotus Petal. Sacrifice it for a black. Cast Arc Ritual. This is the sixth card in the graveyard. We will cycle Architects of Will. We had another Cabal Ritual that was very good. Cycle. This is us going for a turn three victory. Cycle the Imposing Vantasaur. Cabal Ritual. Cycle Architects. So we can still cycle one more and then decide if we want to go get a song. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight creatures in graveyard so I'd actually be using the same amount of mana I'm just gonna cycle this Vantasaur cycle the Street Wraith okay so now we can go get the songs if we so choose and I think it's probably wise when we have repository scob so we'll go grab a songs of the damned cast it for 10 reaping the graves return triple Street Wraith it's important that on the last copy, we return the Blood Celebrant to make blue for the Repository Scob in our hand. Keep cycling. All right, we go to eight. Dark Ritual. And we have enough mana where I'm just going to bring everyone home. Play out our land for turn. Cycle. Okay, keep cycling. Dark Ritual. Cycle the Stinger. Okay, now we know that we should get these songs with the repository scob. Just keep cycling. Okay, tap for a blue. We'll play the scob. Exploit. Where are you, Songs of the Damned? There you are. Cycle. Cast it. 14 mana. Play the Blood Celebrant. Cycle a couple more. And another song. So that's going to do it. That's going to be the match. Storm 16, Reaping the Graves, back-to-back -back turn threes. And this is what I was talking about, referring to speed. I think that first match was a little bit of a fluke. 
Uh, small sample size, I know, but this is what the matchup should look like against Walls. We're now 2-1. Two, two matches left to go. Let's try to get some Ws. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Keep, 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 keep for match number four. This hand is terrific. All right, so we see a bridge, most likely affinity. I'm going to just choose to go grab our swamp, pass the turn. Another bridge. Might not be affinity, who knows? Another street right there was delightful. Non-sarcastic there, I actually do. Would love another street. Ah, it's Just Guy. Okay. They're on Just Guy Wildfire. The matchup I do feel favored in. Really depends on the amount of uh, relics in their sideboard. A lot of Reaping the Graves here. Um, Cycle Street Wraith. One thing to note is that they can just burn you out. They do play Lightning Bolt and Galvanic Blast, so you don't want to go too low if you don't have to. Cycle the Vantasaur. Cycle Street Wraith. Okay, no land. Um, oh, I missed it. I probably should have considered playing a Lotus Petal there. Discard the Tularian Winds. I don't think we actually want that card. They're just going to pass. We're at 16. Cycle Healer. Cycle the Horror of the Broken Lands. Play out the Lotus Petal. I didn't want to play it out previously because of storm purposes. Right now, we actually can't make that much storm. Land number five. They're just going to keep passing. Too afraid to cast spells. Cycle Vantasaur. Lovely. Pass the turn. Their first spell of the game, turn five. Opt. Land number six. The cleansing wildfire. We have five in hand. I just don't see why I should play into what they're trying to do here. I'm just going to pass. Thoughtcast. They have seven. They played the artificer, so they do not have double counter spell open here. That is worth noting. And now we will take three, going to thirteen. Interesting. Okay, let's uh try to win. The fourth Reaping the Graves. Wow, I'm never going to get to use this Talarian Winds. Songs of the Damned. Surprise, surprise, they use a counter spell, cast another songs. Now, from five. I don't know if I actually want to play out a healer. They definitely have a removal spell open. Return some street rates. Cycle. And again, I'm at nine life. Cast the Cabal Ritual. Cycle Architects. We definitely need to win this turn. Okay. Another Dark Ritual, certainly welcome. And then this happens. Okay. So we'll cycle down to 10. Mana, that is. Okay. Loving these Ritual draws. They're actually very good. Reaping the Graves. I think I'm going to avoid Street Wraith on this run. It would put me to five. Blood Celebrant would put me to four, and then I could die to a Gaff Blast. Yeah, I think I'm just going to avoid them. But it looks like I can return them anyway. Fine. Cycle. Repository Scob. Ball Ritual. Cycle the Horror. This puts me to seven. I'm just going to return everything. One has four in hand. I'm going to play the healer here because it will unlock my street rates. And if they decide to try to bolt it, I'm good with that. Cycle. Okay, so they're good with letting me have a healer. I am a fan. The fourth Cabal Ritual. Pretty good. Taking a lot of the stress off the songs this game. Speaking of songs... Okay, play out a Swamp, play the Blood Celebrant. The opponent's not F6-ing, which like pr pretty clearly indicates that they have a Galvanic Blast they're just like, waiting to use. 19 cards left in deck. We'll keep cycling, at least for now. Okay, cycle the Dinosaur, turn 14. 
Not that Cycling Dinosaur makes Storm, but I just wanted to note our Storm count. Pull out some Lotus Petals. I'm going to see if I can get them to just use up that Galvanic, uh, Galvanic Blast. Yeah, that's, that's the name of it. So that uh, they can have six and I can just easily win without them pausing and everything. Like, this is a life equity play for me. I feel like it's rude to just tell my opponent that they're dead in chat, but our opponent's been dead for some time now. All right, finally, thank you. Let's sacrifice the healer. So that might seem weird, and I definitely lost the mana by doing it that way, but I don't want that card in play because I've already won. So now when I cycle, I won't have to click on the triggers. Another life equity play we're seeing here. Okay, bring everyone home. Good deal. And the opponent concedes. Beautiful. Heading to game number two. Definitely interested in these mirror shell crabs once again. Board out of Chalarian winds. An architects. Cabal ritual. Lotus petal. Easy peasy. It's interesting if you compare this cyborg plan to what I do now in Legacy. I used to be someone uh, who you can usually break a lot of people down into their cyborging habits in a few ways. But I used to be what a lot of people would call a skimmer, which is like you don't really know how to sideboard, so you just take out like one of this, one of that. It's typically not the best way to build a sideboard map. But in this specific list, I think it makes sense. But uh, in Legacy, for example, I found my win rate went up once I started boarding out Ponder in my Storm deck for cards that were more impactful. And things like, the, like, like that, you're allowed to just board out four of a card. You don't need to take out one of a bunch of good cards in your deck and just board out four of an average one, for example. Game two, we've opened up Double Wraith. I'll try this. Seat. Into the Relic. Not a fan. Should I just play Turbo Dranit Stinger? Is that crazy? Hope that they don't have any removal. All right, here goes nothing. Stinger is on the battlefield. They play an opt. And they missed their land drop? Hell yeah. All right, cycle. This deals them one. Auto yield. Play it. Let's attack for two. Get in there. Actually, I should have considered boarding in Writhing Necromast for this matchup. If I lose this game, I'm probably going to do that for game three. I don't think that they actually have a lot of removal that hits it. Okay, cycle the Wraith. Cycle Ash Barons, go grab an island. Pass. So I could have gone Petal, Cabal Ritual, Reaping the Graves there. I just don't want to Reaping the Graves for two. They play an opt. They find Basic Island. Remove the Ash Barons, that's fine. Play out the island, and we'll attack for two again. Pass. Are we going to win this game with Stinger Beats? All right. Sacrifice the, or remove the Street Wraith, I mean. My bad. We find another Stinger. Get in. Cast Lotus Petal. Pass the turn. So the reason I played out Petal is based on what our opponent does, I could sacrifice the Petal to exile to the Relic to keep the Street Wraith. And I think I will. Exile the Petal. Now we can cycle Stinger. They're at nine. Mirror Shell Crab, let's go. On your end step, Dark Ritual. Reaping the Graves. Counterspell the Relic. <laughs> Mirror Shell Crab. We're playing a value game here. I am the beatdown. That's how most people refer to me. They're like, oh, that Brian Cook, I know him for being the beatdown. Uh, I'm actually going to return the Mirror Shell Crab here because I want to keep Counterspell back up for my Stinger. They discard a wildfire. Cycle this stinger. They'll go to eight. We'll draw a card. Uh, I'm actually going to keep up the counterspell mana, like I said. Okay, they're at six. They play an opt. They find a red source. All right, on their end step, I'll cycle the Vantasaur. They'll go to five. Auto yield. Cycle the Architects. Get punished for keeping a relic hand. Cycle, they'll go to three, and that should do it. Stinger beat down. Just like we drew it up. 
In hindsight, though, I really should have boarded in Writhing Necromass in this matchup. All of their removal is damage-based, and it caps out at four, so Writhing Necromass would have given them issues. But, uh, hey, we got the W anyway. We're three and one. Let's finish this with a four and one record. With card order, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, we're facing Golden Age Batman. As a huge Batman fan myself, love the name. However, I do not love this hand. Take a mulligan. You can't see it uh, even in, like, sometimes I'll do videos with the background of my office behind me. I have a floor-to-ceiling bookshelf that's all DC Comics, primarily Bat Family. Uh, let's keep this and bottom the Blood Celebrant. Or, I could bottom the songs. It just look to Tolarian wins my hand away. That might be better. Let's do that. Swamp. Ah, we're facing the black burn deck. Okay. Beautiful. Big fan. I like drawing the island because I do want to just dump my hand for a new hand. And you don't really want to discard a Songs of the Damned. We've been bumped. Ouch. We'll go to 16. Discard Horror of the Broken Lands to draw a new one. Ball Ritual. Pass the turn. So we will be discarding our hand and drawing five. Untapping with five cards in graveyard, or five creatures in graveyard already. Ouch. We'll go to 15 on the attack. I never remember what this one does. Uh, so let's zoom in. Starting with you, each player votes death or torture. If death gets more votes, each player sacrifices a creature. If torture gets more votes or is tied, each opponent loses four. I guess I'll choose death. It doesn't really matter. We take four. All right, so I'm at 11 life. I'm going to Tolarian wins for five new cards. Pretty good five. Dark Ritual. Cycle. Um, yeah, I can cycle. Granith Healer will play the Ash Baron's Cabal Ritual. Lotus Petal. Cycle the Dranith Healer. Let's see if we can spike his songs. Take a Dark Ritual. Why not? All right. So this is a Reaping for five. I'm going to return the Healer. I think we might actually want to play out the Healer. Okay. Sacrifice for a white. Play Healer. And then cycle. We go up to 12, cycle again, let's Dark Ritual, try to gain some life here, back up to 14, we fizzled so it's been another land out of our deck, we're at 15 life now, go grab a Swamp, cycle this Stinger, 16 life, okay, pass, Tyrant's Choice. Let me read this again. I'm sorry. So starting with you, each player chooses death or torture. If death gets more votes, each opponent sacrifices a creature. If torture gets more votes or is tied, each opponent loses four life. So do I think that healer is worth four life? They have two cards in hand. I'm going to choose death. Uh, I definitely clicked on that one backwards. I meant to keep the healer, but uh, oh well. I'm not going to dwell on it. Okay. Architects, we will cycle. Cycle the healer. Cannot uh, discard this Songs of the Damned. So I'm going to play the Swamp out. I was holding the lands because I was thinking that maybe at some point we Tolarian wins uh, them away. But here, now that we've drawn these songs, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I actually should have held it anyway. That might have been better. Because I could... Okay, yeah, I should have held it because I could Songs of the Damned hold priority to Lyrian wins. So I should not have played out the land. Cycle. Pass the turn. We have one card in hand and we're at 11. We're at 8. They're one land away from being able to flashback bump. We go to 7. Risky. Risky, risky. So if I cycle this and miss, we could Tolarian wins for 3. But they would have to be enough. All right, I go to five. 
Cast the songs. Valerian wins for three. Cycle. Should I thin? Not so sure about this, but I have to hit if I want to live. So let's thin. I should have gotten an island. That was dumb. Ah. Oh. Okay. Keep cycling. Go to three. Go to one. Come on, deck. Give me a reaping. Bummer. So if I didn't play the land, I could have drawn a swamp. All right. We should not be losing to Blackburn. That's a little disappointing. Um, I have to imagine they have some graveyard hate. It's been a while since I've looked at a Blackburn list. I'm not even sure if they show up in Goldfish. Blackburn. Rancid Earth. Trespasser's Curse. Geth's Verdict. Rotted Reunion. It looks like they don't have any graveyard hate in the 75 for that list. Same with this one. Yeah, let's just try to be a better combo that I can not fizzle. Oh, I should probably bring in Dehada's Ploy. Maybe board out two Street Wraith. Let's do this. Dehada's Ploy works very, very well with uh, Tolarian Winds, it's worth noting, because it doesn't care if they're cycled. It only cares about cards discarded. Cycle. Pass the turn. They play a Swamp. The Serrated Scorpion is back. Cycle. See if we can hit that land. No dice. Pass the turn. Land number two. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, I would lose a life and they gain a life. That's fine. But this card is very easy to beat. Another song, so let's cycle the stinger. Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. That's card number six in the graveyard. Cycle Horror. That's Threshold, Cabal Ritual, Cycle, Cycle again, Songs of the Damned, Songs of the Damned, Reaping the Graves. Uh, I guess I should play out the Celebrant here, because it returns an extra creature if I cast it. Alright, bring everyone home. Cycle. And again. Cast this Dark Ritual, why not? Cycle Architects. Cycle the Street Wreath going down to 14 life. Valerian wins. Nice. Cycle. The Hottest Ploy. I like that. Cycle again. Cycle again. Okay. So we're just going to return these other two. I have seven mana. It's enough to do a really cool play here. Um... Yeah, I think I'm good with this. How many creatures do we have in Graveyard? Seven. So I was thinking about doing Tahada's Ploy, Whole Priority, Chilarian Winds, Reaping the Graves, but it's actually not the ideal play. I think it's like a little too cute and I should try to cycle for mana. All right, we ended up hitting and now I can do that play. So I'm going to lose a life. Whole Priority, Tahada's Ploy. Sacrifice for a blue. Hilarion wins. And now Reaping the Graves returning everyone. I still have a land drop. Okay, so this is going to be like a draw 8, I believe. Or a draw 11. Close enough. And now the ploy resolves, and holy moly, that was bad. Okay. Uh, discard and Ash Barons. Well, we're at 38. I guess that is a silver lining. Cycle the Horror. Move to discard. I don't think we're allowed to use these Talarian Winds. Discard an Ash Barons. Okay, 38 life is a lot. Opponent plays a Swamp, and now they're tapping 2 mana for a Sign in Blood. Another Scorpion. They do not attack. They draw a Dark Ritual. Cycle an Architects. Uh, teachings was actually very good. We've played our land. I'm just going to pass. Vampire's Kiss. We go to 36 life. They get a couple blood tokens. The Reckoner Raid. Now they'll attack for two. I'll go to 33. No blocks. Okay, on their end step, we'll cycle. I believe we're going to go for it on our turn. Okay, take a draw. Play the island. Dark Ritual. Teachings. 
Go get songs, cast it for... Th uh, actually, let's cycle once first. Make one more mana this way. Cycle. And again. 13 cards left in deck. Repository Scob, welcome to the party. Ball Ritual. We need to increase Storm Count, so I'm going to play the Stinger. I don't care about the Drain. Lose a life. Play the Repository Scob. Triggers. Sacrifice the Scob. Return Songs of the Damned. Cast it. Make 18 mana. Flashback the Teachings. And now with the Teachings, we'll grab another Songs. Cast that. That's from 9. Storm 10, Reaping the Graves. And now we just return Cyclers and win the game. Okay, so Reaping the Graves is on the stack. They're at 24. If we need to, we can still cast the other Reaping the Graves in order to win this. Make two red mana with the Blood Celebrant. Play Stinger from 11. From 12, another Stinger. Cycle deal three. Cycle again, deal another three. And the opponent concedes we're headed to the final game of this league. I want the W. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah. I'm down for this. Swamp. This is the turn. Interesting. We'll just go grab a swamp ourselves. Pass. Land number two. Ooh, they drew the Akiba gain for turn. Or Akiba Reckoner Raid, my bad. Really a card that they prefer on turn one. We'll pass. I don't know if they're like sitting on a bazooka bog or something, so I don't really want to play out my cards in the main. Vampire's Kiss, you've got it. Cycle Horror. I don't think I want to thin with this Ash Barons. I think we just want to cycle. Get creatures going. Draw for turn. Pass. Now the enchantment will transform into a 2-2 Menace. Another Vampire's Kiss. So they have a lot of blood tokens. They have three cards in hand as well. Cycle this Horror of the Broken Lands. The Ball Ritual, cycle the Stinger. Then with the Ash Barons, we don't have any action right now. Go grab another Swamp, I guess. Take a draw. Granite Stinger. Cycle it. Cycle the Healer. Cycle Architects. Do I show them the Street Wraith and go to 12 trying to spike here? I'm going to play the Blood Celebrant. Pass the turn. Okay, I mean, that is technically a burn spell. I go to 13, they have two cards. Three cards with their draw step. Another Reckoner Raid. If we don't draw into something good, I'm going to lose this game. They have one card in hand. They didn't use the Blood Token. All right. We should be good now. Cycle the Street Wraith. And another Songs. Okay. They should have used a blood token rather than play out land number five. Ball ritual, lotus petal, dark ritual, songs. And I'm going to hold priority on those songs. Cast reaping the graves for seven. Architects plus the others. Cycle. Glaring winds. Okay. I'm going to return everyone now. Cycle again. Keep going. The hottest ploy. That's a good one. Cycle. Cycle again. Keep cycling. Cycle. Cycle the architects. I was thinking about Tolarian Winds, but I realized with the repository scob, I think I'm supposed to just get back the reaping in the graveyard. What's the hottest ploy with this still on the stack? Discard Ash Barons. This can now resolve. Repository Scob. Triggers. And that should be the ball game. Reaping the Graves. Lotus Petal. The Ball Ritual. Songs. Songs. Blue. Galarian Winds holding priority and then Reaping the Graves. This time we will not cycle with the uh, anything on the stack. We just want to return and discard. 36 mana floating. 
probably could have won right there without the Trillerian wins, but why wouldn't you want to draw 15 cards? Come on. Dark Ritual. The Ball Ritual. Let's return everyone again. Reaping the Graves. Okay, so it looks like we're going to finish this league four and one after losing round number one to the wall combo deck, which I do believe is a favorable matchup. It's just we didn't happen to win. We lost the die roll and we sort of exchanged uh, gold fishing, although they had an interactive spell in game three and we didn't. So that was sort of the difference maker. Oddly enough, I don't we did not face any like top tier decks this league. Um, no disrespect to our opponents or their deck selection choices, but we didn't face the Cogate deck. We didn't face the Mere Terror, Affinity, Mono Red. We, we didn't face tier one decks. So it was a little bit of an oddity this time, but still some pretty good games here. They're going to make a blood token or use their blood token. Why wouldn't they play that on their main phase? That's strange. All right, let's start blasting. And they concede. We get the 4-1. Let's open up some chests. See what I get. Wedding ring? That doesn't look like it's worth much. Bummer. No white initiative creatures for legacy. Those are the money opens right now. But, uh, hey, the league uh, went fairly well. I thought Mirshall Crab it looked good in that one spot. It's been good for me in my other leagues as well. The darkness could be snuff out if you're interested in beating walls. I don't know if I feel strongly about this choice or not. Um, I like three Tularian wins in the four Cabal Rituals. Everything felt pretty smooth. I never really missed the main deck ploy, in my opinion. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And as always, keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.